Alright guys, I'm Rabia. Dave. And once again, much like a video previous to this one, Dave has very kindly come to visit me in my humble abode to talk us through some brand new Dark Glass electronics pedals. Indeed. This is the Hyperluminal, which is a compressor pedal. They come up with some great names, right? They, they do. Hyperluminal. Yeah. I don't even know what that would mean. Luminal is in light? I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. I mean, hyper because it's you, you know full you, of energy. You get optical compressors, which is using yeah. LEDs and stuff. So, yeah. okay. But it anyway, could be along those lines. <coughs> it's a compressor. Apologies for the coughing there. <laughs> um, it is. It's a compressor. So they they used to have the supersymmetry um, compressor pedal, which was a very cool compressor. Mm -hmm. um, I never actually owned one, no. which is a bit of a shame. But uh, I did play one a few times, and I think I might have even demoed one on... Compressors is not really a, an effect I've noticed you, well, at least from being in a band together for 13 years, I've never really seen you with a, des a de dedicated compressor on your board. No. Yeah. And there's a, a good reason for that. Now, I do, I use, uh, on the MS3, mm. um, I use their compressor a little bit in certain sections. Mm. Um, but yeah, in general, I use a lot of, not like, a lot of compression but I use compression in the studio mm. and we obviously do our, our live signal chain thing and, mm. and James compresses that but I find that because I've got a studio background I can't get compressor pedals to do what I need them to do right. there's not enough flexibility to dial in the, the correct compression right. and often that it just ends up either not doing anything or it's doing so much that it just feels natural and I can't can't play it. Mm. So um, yeah, I guess on my board I've stayed away from compression until now. Yes, for good reason. <laughs> yeah, genuinely. Um, so the Hyperluminal is a small form factor pedal with, and I must admit, my favourite feature so far before hearing it as such is the fact that it's touch operated. It does it has two little touch sensors on there, so cool. which won't wear out. Mm. Um, they will last you know basically it's it's a very durable uh thing to do and the thing that's most sort of beneficial about it is that you're not going to like kick settings and mm. ruin things live compression it's, it's less, settings yeah yeah which is one of those things that like again for me is an important mm. part of it um so it's really handy having the touch sensors mm. um for that and it also means that you can get a lot more flexibility and tweakability and settings mm. inside a very small form factor. Right. So so in terms of the the pedal and what it can do, obviously you've got your blend time, which is your attack and release, then you've got your output, and then you've got the amount of compression. But I think the trick here with this pedal is the settings that you can control with the touch sensors, which yeah. are. So on the left-hand side, you've got the ratio. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Quickly speaking, just a really like I'll try not to get too technical. Studio and go on tips for ages, with Dave. But what we're talking about is peak and RMS. Mm -hmm. So every waveform and every you know thing that you play is going to have a loud transient and the quieter ones. Like you you know when you dig into a string, you get an initial spike and then you get the the tail. And the compression is basically reducing the volume of that peak and shortening the volume difference between that peak signal and the RMS signal. Squashing it together. So you're just, you're lowering that dynamic range basically to even things out in mm. order to make things have more sustain or there's loads of tricks and things that you can do with compression, but that's that's what it's doing. So the ratio knob is basically determining how many decibels you want to turn down the peak mm. once it's over a certain threshold, mm. essentially. So um, the higher the ratio, the more that's going to come down. So mm. it's how drastic the the, the, the effect is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the right hand side, you've got three different compression modes. So uh, there's loads of compressors in the world, um, and in studios, there's you know often studios will have many compression, uh, you know, different compressors with different compression circuits mm. because they all have a slightly different character to them. Some will get a bit saturated, some are a bit warmer, some are really transparent. And so uh, Dark Glass have put their supersymmetry compression in there, which was a unique thing to them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great sounding compressor. So that's still in there. 
Um, so even though they're not making the super symmetry anymore, you can still get that sound with mm -hmm. this pedal. Uh, but they've also added two others. Mm -hmm. uh, one which is a very famous um, bus compressor. Um, <laughs> is it still? Yes. <laughs> and yeah, it's a much loved compressor. I don't think there's a pro studio that doesn't have one. Mm. Um, typically it was used as a stereo bus compressor, sounds great on drums and things like that, um, but also got used on bass a lot because of the way that it handles the low end. Mm. So that style compressor is in there. Um, and the last uh, compressor that's in there is a FET one, mm -hmm. which again is uh, a FET circuit that was made famous by, uh, again, another loved and... The people that made the device we're using to record this video. Yes. Well, <laughs> yes. So, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and, and, and that one um, can be really good for getting a lot of, sort of saturation and, and warmth and it's more aggressive. Gritty. Yeah. And there was a, a hack with that uh, unit where, on the ratio setting, it had like push buttons in a line, which you select your mm. ratio, and when you push one in, the other one pops out. But <laughs> you could jam it by pressing all at the same time. Yeah. And when you did that, it, it, things just got really like beefy and just a bit silly and I love the fact that you can do that with this pedal. Yeah, um, literally with your ratio setting, when you go to FET you can, in fact I'll demonstrate it, so if I just go over to FET and then just show you real quick, so if we push up the ratio here, two, three, four and then bosh, then you got them all on. Yeah. So yeah, I think that was particularly nice for me and Dave to see. Yeah, it, I mean if, more, if nothing else it just shows that you know, the engineers and designers and stuff at Dark Glass aren't just playing around with circuits and making things that sound cool. Uh, they obviously know their stuff. Mm. They know why units are, are loved and why they're, you find them in, in, you know, pro studios. They're all musicians and they're incorporating th tools for people like us so that we can have studio tools like that on a pedal board. Mm. Um, so... I think we should check it out. I've not properly played through this unit yet. Awesome. Um, oh, well, the only other thing to mention is that this pedal has a USB socket. Means um, you can use the Dark Glass Suite, which is a free app you can buy. What? A free app you can buy? A free <laughs> app you can download if you yeah. just go Dark Glass Suite on Google, find it, download it. Yeah. And when you plug the pedal in to the Dark Glass Suite, it comes up with a load of things that make this pedal the reason that I'm probably going to end up putting it on my board. Mm. So this is, obviously you're restricted to how many knobs and stuff you can put on a pedal. And so all we've got at the top here is time. And that frustrates me most of the time mm. because you can't change the amount of tack or the release. So how quickly it's going to respond to a, 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 a transient mm. and how long it's going to sort of take for that to stop having an effect. Mm. Um, so what they've cleverly done is put those settings to be adjusted and saved to the pedal in the dark glass suite so you can plug this in dial in exactly what you want mm. and you can do this for each individual um type, of, type of compression so you could have a different uh, minimum release and, and or maximum maximum release minimum attack and whatever mm. um for each individual compressor save that and then you could save that whole pedal as a setting mm. and you can do multiples of these so that if you've got um either several pedals because uh, you want you know a couple on and they all affect differently you can yeah bespoke compression settings per and, and it might be that you you play in a function band mm. and you want the pedal for a certain thing and then you go off on the weekend and do metal mm. band and you want to change the way your compressor's working so you can do all of that with the suite and we'll put a screen grab somewhere so you can just see dave running over a couple of those bits it's really straightforward but i'll make sure you can see that up close yeah um, so um the thought of everything We've just set this to fa factory reset. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had a chance to play around with it mm. much yet. Um, so all of the maximum and minimum ta attack and releases are just set to, I guess, zero or whatever it is. It's just factory. Yep. Um, cool. Well, we should get into some tones. And I think we'll start, in terms of compression type, we'll start on bus. Um, yep. So I'll swap back over. So, and then I'm going to put ratio back to zero. Yep. Um, and then it's probably worth just the reason that we've got the settings set like this is we've got compression on full and blend on nil so that we can show you what it actually sounds like as you go up 
and blend being like parallel compression, right? So yeah. with your so dry and your... That, that's the other thing that this pedal does, obviously, is you've got that blend knob, so you can have your complete natural sound mixed in with the compression sound and dial in as much of that compression as you want. Mm. So, yeah, dialing it like this hopefully will give you an idea of what the compressor's actually doing. Mm. Sweet. Let's do it. And also, Dave is playing his signature bass. I am indeed. Out now, available. Yes, These it are is. actually in shops, which blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's pretty immense, man. It is. It is. It's um, a beautiful instrument. I'm crazily happy with this. Uh, and there's obviously the fan for it as well, which is hiding behind me there. Yeah, man. Cool. All right, well, let's crack on. So, pedal's on, um, but this is just dry signal, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, so I'll try and play sort of dynamically and give lots of differences between soft and loud mm -hmm. so you can actually hear the difference there. Okay, cool. So, I mean, it's it's kind of like how we best demonstrate going through this, but I suppose what I was doing there was blending in the compression and then just changing the ratio. And as you noticed, as we got to the sort of second half of ratio, jumped in volume uh, and yeah. it became really drastic. Yeah, it gets perceivably louder because we're turning down those big transients. Mm. Um, and I guess there's some kind of automatic makeup gain in there so that it boosts that volume afterwards mm. um, so that your RMS level stays the same and obviously the more you crush those peaks the more the RMS just becomes the peak yeah um, so how do you want to go about it should we so, well I think it'd be good to explain I guess that the time knob obviously all the way to the left is going to be the minimum amount of attack so how fast it is so it's super responsive with yeah. the max amount of decay or release so um and then flipping all the way to the opposite mm. then you've got the slowest attack with the quickest release and that's how the the knob kind of works as you as you move across so for me i think if you're gonna have stuff like i was doing there with long sort of held notes and harmonics then having a quick attack where we get rid of those initial um attacks with a nice long swimming sustaining um, resonance uh, that's where I would place that and then mm -hmm. obviously pick the ratio accordingly and the and the blend if we were going to do more of a slap sound then I'd maybe move over to something more like the symmetry compressor mm. or the fat compressor get a bit more dirt in there mm. and have a slightly lower um, not drastic but like a slower attack so that mm -hmm. you get that initial transient coming through unaffected and then have a slightly short decay so it's not starting to swim and get too sustainy so that's how we're going to end up getting a punchy sound out of the compressor. Okay. So I guess we've kind of demonstrated the bus side doing the kind of slow... Well, how uh, about we release. do each one, as I just did, and then 
you dial in some settings for things like slap and the kind of things that you like. Yeah. But we we may as well go through each compressor type and just show you how it sounds. Yeah. Whilst you play and I just cool. mess with the knobs. Sounds good. All right, super symmetry. Take it away, Dave. Yeah, man. Some tasty playing, Dave. <laughs> that, um, I quite like the fact that that, for me, um, feels more subtle to my ear yeah. than the bus side. But again, this is all about taste and what you're actually wanting to achieve from the compression sound. But for me, I enjoyed how subtle that was, and particularly yeah. with all the harmonic tap stuff. Yeah. You know, sounded very natural, but just full and warm. Yeah. So, should we move over to the FET? We may as well do that. This one's going to be fun because I think this is going to be quite intense. So, FET side, minimum ratio, Bosch the blend all the way back down, time in the middle. All right, let's have a listen. FET! <laughs> I mean, that's the nonsense. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great, man. I, I think that one for me is the most, it is the most aggressive sound. Yeah. Like easily the most like intense compression. It's cool. Um, but it's got character. There's way more coloration on that than the others. Yeah, it's, it's got a bit more grip to it. And yeah, yeah, it's a bit more obvious. But again, with blend knob, you can always dial it back a bit. At this point, if you want to find some settings you like for slap or whatever, because I've literally just been... Uh, this is how this sounds. This is how I'm, I'm, I don't know. So yeah, well, as I said, I think you know, um, 
if we have a super fast attack mm-hmm. um, with a long release, uh, pretty heavy compression, and sort of yeah, something like that. On FET with lowest ratio, um, or no, we'll put it on the bus. Sort of straighten up the little pre- pedal cam. There you go. Pretty high ra- uh, ratio. Yep. And this I'm expecting to be quite good for that sort of harmonic stuff. So the. It's pretty even. So That's yeah, a, a tone like that works for that kind of bass stuff. Uh, if you move to super symmetry, similar kind of ratio actually, <clears throat> and then we'll um, even this out so it's about sort of halfway ish. Yep. Back off the blend a tiny bit and have the a little bit more compressed. Uh, this should sound pretty good for a kind of like finger style kind of thing. So pick out some of those mutes. <laughs> So it's quite, That's great. quite kind of transparent, but just good for that. Yeah. Kind of picking those things and having it the same kind of volume as the notes. So it's good for that kind of like finger finger style kind of thing. And then yeah, I guess as another example, move over to the FET, uh, higher the ratio a little bit, <clears throat> and then we'll move the time so that we've got a slower attack again. Um, with a quicker release, really heavy compression, uh, and blends probably around about where it needs to be. And this should kind of sound quite good for the slap stuff, so we're going to allow that initial hit to come through. Mm-hmm. Maybe just a little bit too heavy, so yeah, it's the quite compression heavy. back, move the time back a bit, blend back a little bit, volume up. Still quite a bit. Let's try. great yeah so messing around with it a little bit i think again because the fet is so aggressive i think maybe it was took a little bit longer than the other ones but at the same time it's great that you have the option yeah and i mean obviously the slap stuff would sound good on any of the other things as well i just wanted to do a quick kind of mm. playing around with the settings and also the characters a bit i think obviously with the slap kind of sounds you'd want to pair that with some EQ to get the right kind of mm. frequencies popping through as well. Yeah. Um, but also, have a play around with where you place that EQ. Like, mm. Try putting it before the compressor and try doing it after the compressor because different modes are going to have their different characteristics yeah. and sometimes you want to accentuate those and sometimes you want to tame them. Mm. Um, but also, you know, boosting certain frequencies, like bo- boosting the lows into a compressor, you're going to end up with a lot more like of that subby sort of squelching noise mm. as opposed to doing it afterwards so yeah play around with your boards to play around with where you put that EQ. It's also worth saying that you know um, we deliberately didn't choose to add any sort of coloration from a preamp as such like we didn't use a pedal we didn't use an amplifier this is straight into the Universal Audio Apollo 8P with just uh, a UAD 610B yeah um, and again, so. again, not doing drive either because no. you know everyone knows that Dark Glass do awesome drive stuff, and really it's about hearing what this pedal is doing to the bass, mm. um, and then you compare that with whatever you want and whatever styles you want. Yeah. So, well, there you go. There is a look at the Hyperluminal from Dark Glass. Dave, thank you very much for coming down and slaying it as always. Thank you guys for watching. And thanks Dark Glass for sending the pedal over. If you want to know anything else about it, links in the description box below. 
comment, like, subscribe, and share. Subscribe to Dave. There will be a little bubble somewhere here for Dave's YouTube I do, channel. I do a video every year. He does a video every year. <laughs> but it's always a good one. Yeah. All right, guys. Take it easy. We'll see you later.